let's think in terms of um, sort of defining intelligence here. I can imagine a job at an airport, and you're sort of specifying it there, of somebody who maybe has, uh, is in a room with a bunch of screens that's scanning a crowd of people at an airport going through security. Mm -hmm. And that person has, as the algorithm in their brain, the task of, all right, Who's looking strange, you know? And they're and they're they're scanning an enormous amount of data. They're they're using these information channels that you've already described: facial information, the way they stand, they sit, you know. Maybe they're compositing also racial information, all sorts of things, and all that information. Then they're coming to a conjecture that says that person pull them out of the line and go search them. Now, if you can make a machine that will do that, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe Somebody it will be wrong, maybe it will be yeah. right, but you yeah. can make a machine that can... Make a machine that detects a lot of these things and, and profiles, uh, clusters that look atypical. Is that intelligence? I call it pattern recognition. Um, <laughs> some people say all of intelligence is pattern recognition. Uh, I, I think something like that could be used in a very unintelligent way. It yeah, well, no, that's for a, sure. In a yeah. very... Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, in a way that makes false assumptions. These things are complicated. There are ways that they can really be, uh, you know, misled. For example, when we had the wearable computing symposium in Boston, we had quite the scare right before because one of our MIT students went to the airport to pick up her boyfriend uh, that morning, and she was wearing a breadboard she had made and worn at MIT all week that had a nine volt battery hanging off of it, and it had her name on it. It was her name tag. At MIT, it was kind of boring to have a my name is with you know, a magic marker on it. It was more fun to build a breadboard with your name on it. So she wears it all week. She gets up after a couple hours sleep working on problems at all night, goes to Logan Airport wearing her my name is star breadboard LEDs and a nine volt battery, and is immediately arrested. Um, you know, gunpoint, uh, you know, and they said she's lucky she um, cooperated or she could be in the morgue. Now, she could do eye contact. She's very social. A person who has been up all night who might be kind of geeky and doesn't ordinarily do eye contact um, or uh, somebody who, for whom do eye, eye contact, contact is yeah. threatening. <laughs> yeah. That's meaningful up at MIT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or like all the people coming in town for right. this wearable computing conference who are encouraged to wear their computers um, showing up at Logan Airport right after this. Uh, you know, th these kinds of things um, could cause some, what I would say, very unintelligent reactions, right, right? where people are not informed um, and make, jump to the wrong conclusions. I guess the, the, the question, and John Donahue, I'll put this to you, at what point does a machine that computationally specifies some set of tasks that humans have traditionally done, when does that become intelligence, and when is it just an appliance, or is the threshold really undetectable? Is it something we're only going to know like a thousand years in the future? Well, the fact. philosophers spend their, their days arguing about what is intelligence. I think we can get machines to mimic a huge number of functions that we do. So, you know, if we wanted a machine to recognize your flute here, actually it would be very hard for it to do because it's never seen one, but we could treat, train a machine to do that, and then would it be intelligent? It would recognize a flute. If I move the flute around, the, the computer wouldn't be able to recognize it because, so it's no, it's, you would say, no, it's dumb because it, can't, it can see a flute in this configuration but not in another one. We have these amazing abilities to do things like generalize and look at the world and understand in, in depth uh, and, and, uh, but also in breadth about things. And I think machines, we just don't understand how the brain does that. And it's, it's a really miraculous function. It's a kind of computation that is beyond our understanding now.